Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the basic levels of the modified Pilates shoulder bridge. Now, the shoulder bridge is an absolute staple classic of mat work Pilates classes, and there's good reason for that. In most people's minds, it's thought of as a hip and leg muscle strengthening exercise, and a lot of people feel their hamstring muscles are getting really good work with a shoulder bridge, but there's far more to it to, uh, to, than that, and it's multifaceted in, in what it can get for you. Um, in its simplest form, in its kind of most basic form, which I'll be going through today, it just brings some of the body weight up and down off the mat from the rest position and gets you focusing on control and smooth and tensional movement. The more advanced levels which come beyond this, you'll begin to take one leg off the floor while keeping that control and doing various movements with them. Rather, you know, it might just be a tabletop, but it might progress on to big sweeping leg movements focusing on the hamstring, lengthening on that leg while strengthening the other side. If you're feeling really adventurous, you can then bring in all sorts of lovely modifications like working with a Swiss ball, and that will get you a lot of um, high-end core stability work. So the shoulder bridge is a really great exercise to practice. There are so many progressions, there are so many advancements you can make, but as with all things, you don't want to run before you can walk. So when you're practicing your shoulder bridge, make sure you're in these fundamentals really well drilled and you're thinking about the points raised in the video so that you're making sure that you're not cheating and using compensatory movement patterns instead of that ideal um, core strengthening which we're after with the shoulder bridge. It's an exercise performed from the rest position, as I mentioned, so that's where we'll start the tutorial in just a moment. Okay, so this is our start position for the shoulder bridge. It is the Pilates rest position. Here you want to make sure that your knees feel that they're bent at a comfortable angle, your feet are parallel and connected well with your mat. And we want to just make sure the shoulders aren't rounded up towards the ceiling as we would do customarily with the rest position. There are two basic levels for the shoulder bridge and I'm gonna teach you the one first of all which maintains a neutral lumbar spine and therefore neutral pelvic position. When people are doing this level, um, I very much encourage them to have something between their knees. I've got a little three inch block here, which I'm going to place so I can get a little bit of purchase. It could be a ball, it could be a folded up pillow, it could be anything which just fits comfortably between the knees and doesn't bring them too close together. Whatever width your knees end up at, make sure your feet are also the same width. Now we just want to engage a little squeeze onto the cushion between the knees and that will wake up some slings of muscles which are really helpful in what's called forced closure through your pelvic girdle and just help get some stability and control as we perform our shoulder bridge. We want to be in that neutral position, so fingertip gap underneath the base of the spine and to pre-engage those deep abdominal and pelvic floor core muscles just to that three out of 10 level and hopefully keep them ticking away for the duration of the exercise. Now with the shoulder bridge, we're gonna place the palms down the floor as well as just pressing those shoulder tips gently down towards the mat as well. I'm going to pre-tense some of the muscles involved in the shoulder bridge and I want you to push your hands down into the floor about one or two out of ten effort just so you feel that there's a little bracing effect through the upper body and then we're going to do the same with the feet. We're going to push the feet down. Now as you do that you may and hopefully should feel a little bit of pre-engagement of what are called the hamstring muscles in the back compartment of the thigh. So we're going to press the toes down. We're going to make sure we can feel all the toes in contact with the mats. Feel the energy going through those hamstrings. Feel the little bracing movement and keeping the squeeze on the knees with the core muscles going as well. A lot to think about. From that position, take a breath in and as you breathe out, lift your pelvis up off the mat to a comfortable height and then come back down. Don't worry about the height to which you go when you're first attempting a shoulder bridge. Each time, pre-engage by pressing down the hands, almost wrapping the shoulders down towards the floor, pressing the feet, squeezing the knees, feeling the muscles wake up. Take that breath in to prepare, breathe out to move up, breathe in to move down. As you continue with your repetitions, see if you can keep that gentle pre-engagement going so that your hands, your elbows, your shoulders, 
your feet, your legs are all primed and ready to go when you're performing your shoulder bridge. Now we want to get a nice smooth transition as we perform our shoulder bridge and to try and prevent the legs swaying side to side. The cushion between your knees should help substantially with that, but even so, a lot of people find it very difficult to keep that control, and it's often linked to the height to which you move. So if you're really struggling with the shoulder bridge, or you just feel it's um, just not working out for you, just aim to bring your, your hips a couple of inches off the floor. So that, uh, that same pre-engagement of all those muscles I mentioned, exhaling up, inhaling down. That's a perfectly adequate shoulder bridge if you're new to this technique. If you're able to get up into those more elevated positions, this is where we need to be mindful that we're not losing our neutral alignment. See, a lot of times with shoulder bridges that people will round right up onto the shoulders, flare up the chest, arch the low back, and that just leads to lots of unwanted compression and tightening of muscles which we'd rather not. So if you're coming up to the top, keep that rib cage lower down your hips at every point of your shoulder bridge, and ideally, we'd have a nice straight line from the knees running through to the upper torso. Um, and here's where you can get that nice gluteal muscle engagement, those muscles in your back pocket. We don't want to spend a lot of time up at the top, hence why we're breathing out as we come up and in as we come back down. But just as you're approaching the top of your shoulder bridge, squeeze those glutes as if you've got a penny between them and you don't want to drop that penny. So you can feel that switching on of that extra power in the back pocket region. So when you're stopping and breaking all this down, there's a hell of a lot to think about with the shoulder bridge, but it will yield that really nice controlled bridge position which we're after. So as we're going up again, we're thinking about the arms, shoulders are not rounding up off the mat, and we've got that beautiful control as we're going up and down. So there is the first technique for the shoulder bridge. I'll talk through the second version, which focuses on spinal articulation in just a moment. Okay, into the second variation for the beginner shoulder bridge. As I just mentioned, this focuses on spinal articulation, which means trying to get some movement with each segment of our spinal column. This is why it's very common to hear the phrase like a string of pearls when people are, are coaching a shoulder bridge. If you imagine that your spine is like a string of pearls laid down your mat, and think what happens if you were to pick one end up. If you were to lift a string of pearls from one end, you'd get one pearl coming up off the mat at a time, and the opposite when you lay them back down. And that's a very nice bit of visual imagery for how to perform this next movement correctly. Pretty much all the same things apply. We've got that squeeze, we've got that pre-engagement of the legs, hands pressing down, shoulders just rounding down towards the floor, not up. And this time, we're gonna start by gently flattening our back. So we're rocking that pelvis towards our head, i.e. pulling the belt line up. Now, as soon as you do that, you'll feel your tailbone just lift up off the floor, and that's the first pearl in that string of pearls coming up. So from the start, take a breath in, Breathe out to flatten the back gently, pull the tailbone up, and now that tailbone leads the movement all the way up to the same bridge position we were in before. On the way back down, visualize those first pearls coming back down onto the mat, and we're keeping the rest up until the last possible moment, and then we rock our pelvis back to the neutral position. So a little bit more to think about here, with this technique where you're articulating the spine, sometimes it can be provocative for lateral hip pain. So if you find that there's any discomfort here, either in the outer hips or in the back, then that's a surefire thing you want to just do the first variation, maintaining neutral all the time instead. But just a final um, point with this technique. When you're coming up and down, you've got to think about different parts of your body battling each other. So on the way up, Imagine you've got a heavy weighted belt over your rib cage and your hips are trying to pull up, but the more they pull, the more the weight increases on the rib cage. So you're really getting that nice sense that you're trying to push that rib cage down 
while sending the pelvis up. And this will mean that you're really focusing on getting individual segmental movement, hopefully, if it's available to you. It switches on the way back down. So this time, the rib cage is just too heavy, but there's even more, you've got kind of helium balloons strapped around your hips now. So as you go back down, you're really trying to keep those hips up. And this is where you feel the articulation, the flexion, the curving of the spine. And you can really get a sense of that movement that we're after. Exhale as you come up, squeezing the glutes at the top of your bridge, inhaling as you come down. Keep the squeeze on the pillow between your knees, keep the toes on the floor. They're often things which go walkabouts, quite literally. So make sure you've got this lovely connection with the mat underneath you. And really visualize that string of pearls coming up one at a time and then down one at a time. Shoulder bridges work your hamstrings. Uh, as a basic rule of thumb, the further your feet are away from your hips, the more you're going to feel the hamstrings when you're performing a shoulder bridge. A lot of people will cramp very readily in those hamstring muscles. So if that's you, you can bring those heels really close in towards your hips and then perform your shoulder bridge in a much bigger uh, position of knee flexion. The trade-off is that the more your heels are tucked in underneath, the more stretch you're going to feel in your quadricep region. Okay, so you might find that if you're bringing the heels closer together, the hamstrings are toned down quite a lot and don't um, cramp readily, but you might not be able to get up very high because when you get up to that position, you're going to feel quite an intense stretch through that quadricep compartment. But it's one of the best features for a shoulder bridge for me. Uh, I treat it much more as a stretch for that anterior compartment of the thigh. And it's a lovely one to do because you're using your own muscles. You're using the antagonistic muscle in that posterior chain down the back of the body to switch off those muscles which you're then getting that lovely stretch for. So as I said right at the beginning of the video, it's a very versatile exercise and that's why I love the shoulder bridge. Final thoughts, as per usual, you're not pushing to fatigue, you're not going to a point where you're shaking and the muscles are fasciculating all over the place. We want a lovely smooth floating movement as if you're being lifted up and down by rising and falling water. Think about that the kind of quality of movement for every repetition. There's an awful lot to think about. So if you're keeping that squeeze on the knees consistent, if you're keeping the pressure in the floor with the feet consistent, if you are clenching those glutes consistently at the top of your movement, you're doing really well. There's so many things which can go wrong with a shoulder bridge. The techniques I've discussed should really switch off that tendency for the low back to tighten. When people arch right up onto their shoulders and barrel that chest up and compress the low back, that's when things go wrong. That's when people get a lot of discomfort with the shoulder bridge and it can set and chain um, a process of events which is really difficult to shift. So that danger of kind of rabbiting on a bit too much about the shoulder bridge, it's a great exercise when done properly. If in any doubt, just back off. Remember the moment your hips come off the floor, you're already doing substantial work for the kinetic chain through the legs and hips. So gradually height will come. And if you think about the points of raise um, as we've gone through the tutorial, you should find you get some really nice progressive work going on with your shoulder bridge.